apart from these five books in the Psalms, there are other subgroupings, like many hymn books, that help us understand and enjoy this wonderful part of the Bible. Here are some of them. Messianic Psalms. We briefly discussed these 16 Psalms in another scripture snapshot. They include topics like Christ's sonship, his shepherd care, his sovereign right to rule, his betrayal, passion, and suffering, his ascension and coming kingdom, his role as high priest, and as the chief cornerstone. Most are easily recognized because they're quoted in the New Testament. Royal Psalms. This group of eight songs focuses on God's king in Psalm 2, 24, 29, 45, 47, and 48, 72, and 110. Of course, God is king is a theme also found in many other psalms as well. Historical Psalms. Psalms 104 to 107 provide an overview of God's ways with men. Psalm 104 tells of creation and sounds much like the last chapters of Job. 105 from the call of Abraham to the Exodus, 106 from the Exodus to the exile, and 107 describes the return from exile. Biographical Psalms. Here are 14 Psalms that include an event marker in the title to let us know the occasion of the Psalms writing. It's fascinating to read the actual accounts in the books of Samuel or the Kings, then see what lessons they learned from their experience. Penitential Psalms. These Psalms express sorrow over sin. Psalm 6, 32, 38, 51, 102, 130, and 143. Hallel Psalms. Psalms 113 to 118 are called the full Hallel, and those are read to this day by Jewish households during the three pilgrim festivals, Passover, Pentecost, and Tabernacles. Psalm 136, often referred to as the Great Hallel, is also read at Passover. Imprecatory Psalms. 18 Psalms are considered imprecatory. These call down judgment on God's enemies. Psalm 137 verse 9 famously declares, Happy shall he be that takes and dashes your little ones against the stones. How can these be inspired? Remember that the Psalter is the divine hymnal for every age. These Psalms will be the hymn book of the remnant during the time of Jacob's trouble, the Great Tribulation. It will be all they will be able to sing in those dreadful days. God is not apologetic for his judgments, nor should we be. Acrostic Psalms. Another device employed by Hebrews in their poetry is the acrostic. In this case, each verse begins with successive letters of the Hebrew alphabet. This may have been done as a memory aid and, like a counted cross-stitch, showed the careful devotion of the psalmist who prepared these. Psalm 119 is the most intricate of these arrangements, with 22 sections of eight verses each. Each section contains eight lines that start with each letter of the alphabet in order. Most of Lamentations follows this pattern, as does the portrait of the virtuous woman. The following psalms are all or partly acrostic. 9, 10, 25, 34, 37, 111, and 112, 119, and 145. Songs of Degrees, or Ascents. Psalms 120 to 135 are an interesting collection. It suggested that the 15 psalms were arranged by Hezekiah to celebrate the extra 15 years the Lord added to his life. As evidence, the shadow moved back 10 degrees, thus the title, Songs of Degrees, on the sundial of Ahaz. The psalms are arranged like a step sundial, with one by Solomon in the middle, two by David on each side, and 10 anonymous, perhaps penned by the king himself. The term ascents could mean that the shadow ascended the steps as it moved back 10 degrees, or it could refer to the theme of the song, speaking of pilgrims singing these as they go up to Jerusalem for the festivals, finally standing in the Lord's house in Psalm 135. This is our second scripture snapshot of the book of Psalms.